Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update for Monday the 3rd of July and I'm recording this on Friday the 30th of June. My name is Trevor Neal and I'm presenting to you from London. I am a research analyst at RRG Research. As we reach the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of six months, it's worth thinking about what has been the best thing to be in this year, 2023. And this is, of course, the answer is the NASDAQ or the tech stocks or particular tech stocks, but that area. I've done a chart here where each bar is six months. So this is this year and then that's last year. And uh, this is the performance in the six months. So that's this year's performance. And you can see that we've had 35% in six months. And the it's the best since the the tech bubble. And in that six months into the high, we, were, we achieved 61%. So more is possible. And historically has happened previously before we can say the bubble has burst. But no need to say that this balloon will inflate as big as the last one. But the question is, has it got more to go? But at the moment, it's looking very strong and definitely that has been the right thing to be in and it's good that the RRG charts did pick that up right at the beginning of the year after the brutal punishing we hate technology it's all over value the bubble it's all over period that we had lasting for two six months there there it is that's what has been the best to be in and maybe continue to be for a little while longer looking now at the relative rotation graph versus MSCI World. So this is versus the average of the other stock indices, the global stock indices. We see the best performing stock indices index compared to the others is the, still the NASDAQ, still pointing in the right direction. Northeasterly, furthest to the right, strongest and with good positive momentum as well. We've got the Nikkei, that's a product of the weak currency more than anything else. The S&P following having crossed into the leading quadrant, the Dow still holding here and the broadly based Russell right over here in a good trajectory in the improving quadrant but not exciting yet. We've got weakening European it's getting worse, same with the uh, FTSE as well, but these have separated out the CAC, leading it down the stocks, the big stock, the European stock index, the moving into the lagging quadrant and the DAX looking like it's heading its way into there. Heng Seng still pointing absolutely the wrong way. On the daily chart, we have a slightly different picture. We still have the uh, NASDAQ and the S&P and the Nikkei on the right hand side. But you remember the in the weekly chart sampling, the Nikkei and the NASDAQ were up in here in the leading quadrant. And then the NASDAQ was heading northeastly here. They've come round a little bit. So losing some momentum, you know, struggling a bit, but still the strongest stocks against the, the average of the MSCI world average of the other indices. Also, the European stock indices are in a much better place on the daily charts. So here's the DAX uh, still in the, lag in the lagging quadrant, but the stocks has crossed through. The CAC, is, which in the weekly was leading down, is leading up, so in the bounce there. And the FTSE also a good trajectory there, but still quite far from 100, so to say uh, that they're having a short-term rally in relative strength, but they're still facing the wrong way in the longer term uh, perspective. This is the daily chart of the NASDAQ and here we can see the struggle. We surged to the resistance point which we had identified and we've got precisely to it and it's backed off it from 15,200. It has pulled back to this consolidation top in here. Let's so draw this a little bit better. Difficult to do when it's extended out like that, but around uh, the 14,600 level. I'll check, I'll, I'll home in on that in a moment. It's been enough to turn the MACD, daily MACD, uh, cross it to downside. Of, that's the first time it's done that since the beginning of May. Um, and uh, so we're feeling the resistance. And we saw that in the um, RRG chart with the uh, NAS, NASDAQ uh, in the daily 
turning down from the leading quadrant, losing uh, momentum. And here we see it in the absolute chart here. Now there is support. Let's zoom in on that. Homing in, we see that the market has pulled back to previous resistance level, which is now support, which is quite normal behavior in a rising market, zigzagging up like this high, halted that advance, we pulled back, then we broke through it, and now we retest it where it support. This is a story that's gone on all the way up in here. It is enough, however, to have crossed the MACD, as I've said. Now the RSI, look at this, it's come down below uh, 50, and then turned up again through it. And that is typically the behavior of a market that is it's reacting during an advance. So the reaction may be over. So people in, um, who've got a shorter term perspective could see this support as somewhere to protect themselves for longs, looking for a next run upwards. And it could be as extensive as this one here, which went from 14,300 to 15,300. So if you add 1,000 to the this low here at 14,700, we'll call it that'd be 15,700, which is the next run. Fibonacci projection for that would be up in here. So it does look as though this long term trend, which is still intact, we haven't got a top in place yet, I don't believe. It's just part of the normal progress, a bit of a wobble, which is likely to resume, and we probably possibly have got new highs ahead of us. Here now is a daily chart of the S&P. It cleared the resistance as 4,300 resistance, which was a struggle for it, very important level, broke it powerfully, went up to 4,450, and then has come back rather perfectly from a technical point of view to the break point and has bounced from there. We've mentioned this before, that it could happen, likely to happen. It seems that it is happening and we are resuming the advance. The RSI dropped below 50 and has come up, so the the pullback is, is corrected. The MACD, which is somewhat lagging, is still negative. It does look as though we're on our way again, that the trend is resuming on the upside. Traders can look for protection below the 4,300. Look for the small amount of resistance at the high here at 4,400 to be tackled. And then the next resistance is a long way up. It's at 4,600, and that is from the high back in March D1. So we're, there's a big gap between that high and the high of March 2021. So that leg could be quite extensive there. So watch out for this move may be re already resuming and the high may be taken out with relative ease because it's not a strong resistance level. And then that leaves it clear for an attack on that March high of 2022. I think I said 21, 2022. We're watching the Dow Jones Industrial Average very closely. This is a daily chart of it. We've got a series of highs in here. They're not precisely lined up, but they're very close together. 3,400, 4,200, sorry, and then extending up to a range of about 34,600. So we're close to that now. We're pushing up higher lows intact in here. It's hesitant. It has been rebuffed how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times that level. So it's a very significant level and we're pushing towards it. Every time the sellers get control, the buyers come in more aggressively. Low, higher, low, higher, low. Is this another higher low here? So watch out. It could be something explosive going to happen here. And if it does break up, I think the next resistance is going back from April, May of 2022. And that's at 3,500 and 35,350. Right up there, long way up. So I can just clear these highs. I should draw another line in here. I'll draw it in now uh, for the future. Uh, so we've got these highs in here. And the clear that and I think uh, the sky is blue above up to the above the 34 35,350 uh, area. Now jumping to foreign exchange 
This is a weekly relative rotation graph here. We've been talking and been very keen on the Canadian dollar and particularly versus the Japanese yen. But a slight change in behavior here. We've got continuing weakness in the euro and this is heading in a southwesterly direction rap quite rapidly through the weakening quadrant towards the lagging quadrant. The British pound has flipped around again, resumed its uh, stronger tone in, the, in this weekly sampling and uh, the Canadian dollar is still the best one, the only one with the British pound, the only one pointing northeasterly. Then we've got notably also the Japanese yen going the other way. So let's start by looking at the euro. So here is the euro which is having a bit of a wobble. The move up here from around 95 up to 110, 111 area was impressive but when we had this high and this higher high we had a bearish divergence in the MACD so we had severe loss of momentum into this high back in May. Then we came back hard to significant support which held very well around 106.50 then it's bounce and it's fading here and looking like it's putting in another lower high in here and turning down and still according to the RSI in the pro process of going down. So the threat is now that this uptrend line here, which I'll extend um, here going up to 107 area, is, is going to be visited again. So this is looking a little bit wobbly. Cable has uh, eased off in, in the last few last two weeks but it's come back to support it has reached it so far but I'm not sure that it's really broken the uptrend of higher lows in place here and I think that's still good as I do this analysis it, it maybe is beginning to stabilize here if it doesn't stabilize here it's very likely to stabilize around 124 the MACD has crossed down, the RSI has come down quite deep, down below 40, around 39, and hooked up. Maybe the very first sign of it stabilising. If it were to take out this high here of 127, and I think you could protect yourself below 126 and look for a resumption, a breach of the high, and then I tackle this very prominent and formidable resistance at 130 up here. But we have got the zigzagging pattern. It, the current zag looks like completing. I like the position in the RRG and uh, it could be, there are signs that it is bottoming out here. And finally, our favorite pair, uh, pair um, this the Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen soaring away. It, this has been clear to RRG followers for uh, several months. It's still moving strongly up, powerfully up, maybe moving close to parabolic. The MACD is still very positive, but it's moving towards, I caution you, a significant resistance level of these double tops. We'll call it a 110 there, and we're at, we're at 109.21 at the moment. We're close to it. Everything's looking strong for it. The RSI 2, higher lows in place here no divergence yet but be ready this one could be close to having a well-deserved rest in its advance and it is looking rather extended and parabolic in shape so you have been warmed if you're uh, with it, us on this you should have been doing well out of it but we may be coming towards the end for the moment for this move and have a significant correction it's due for a significant correction so that may be ahead of us, but I think it's probably quite soon. I will leave it there for this week. Thank you very much for watching. We always appreciate it and we're honoured to give us, give us your time. We'll be with you again uh, ne this time next week. Uh, it'll be Julius uh, next week, Julius de Campanar. So it's goodbye from Julius and I, research analyst at RRG Research. And may the trend be with you.